Welcome to another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'm your host, Simon. In this episode, we take a deeper look at two of our favorite interviews from Calgary's Noctis Metal Festival, namely Excrematory Grindfuckers and Manila Road. And we also have a chat with Villainizer. But first, let's kick it off to a band profile. Display of Decay was formed in 2007 in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. They released three albums, 2010's Bloodborne EP, The Feasting EP, released in the same year, and their self-titled full-length, released in 2012. All right, how did uh, Display of Decay come together as a band? Uh, it actually started between uh, myself and Mike. We went to uh, high school together in the same guitar class. And being the only guys listening to death metal, it kind of just fell together by itself. And you guys are... You guys just finished recording and just released your new, uh, newest album, right? Yeah. Uh, we recently recorded with Wes Sontag, Disciples of Power, Section 8. Uh, we've done two EPs pri pr uh, previously. Uh, how does the new album sound uh, in comparison to the to Bloodborne? Uh, it's, I find it's a little more produced. like. Because like the original Bloodborne recording was it's pretty much done in the garage with a couple mics mixed it ourselves. So it's a little bit more professionally produced this time around. So obviously it's going to be a little bit better. And uh, what what made you guys decide that you wanted to be musicians and you wanted to pursue this? Uh, pretty much just. You know, the feeling that you get, like, sports just wasn't cutting it for me. I mean, music was really the only outlet that really fit. Figure, you know, if you're doing music, it's just a lot easier to do, and you can do it your own way. That's why. I'd... It's something that uh, a lot of people have to grasp to get through, like, a difficult situation. And even playing death metal, I like to try and throw in some sort of hook, something someone else can kind of catch on to or whether it's in the lyrics will be the odd part where someone can kind of relate to. Uh, our lyrics aren't all about, you know, just like killing people and like the old school slasher flicks. There's a little bit of uh, the mental style to it. And there's different genres also thrown into the mix as well. We first spoke to Manila Road in September of last year, and that was during our Noctis special. Now we only got a chance to play a little portion of that video, and the guys had a lot more to say. Now Manila Road's new album, Mysterium, is going to be coming out later this year. We asked the band about their new record label. Yeah, we signed uh, for Europe, especially with a company called uh, Golden Core Records. It's a subdivision of Six, Six, which is a kind of major company in Europe. Yeah, and. Uh, it showed that the, the owner of this company is a real fan of the band, but uh, he was so busy during the last years that he didn't know that Manila Road was is still existing and he really freaked out. Oh, I need this band! <laughs> now he got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, made us a deal we couldn't refuse. So. Oh. The cool thing about it is, is that we don't feel like we're sacrificing our underground roots yeah. because, uh, you know, we've been signed to Shadow Kingdom here in the States and High Roller for our LP distribution. And all that's still in place. Nothing, of, okay. nothing changes. Yeah. And the main thing for me is that we're still in control of all of our music, the artwork, everything. Uh, we get to say what is. It's just that we're utilizing their distribution power and their promo power. And uh, actually, it's sort of a lucky deal for us because, you know, usually when you sign to a major, they want control of everything. But we still, we still control our publishing and everything. So. We're not really sacrificing any of the underground nature of the band at all by making this deal. And I think it's uh, I think that's really important for us because you know the underground's where we live. I guess uh, what was the recording experience like for Mysterium? Uh, so well, we sell the other ones. Well, not exactly. <laughs> hectic and crazy. Yeah, right? hectic and crazy. Yeah. Red stack. One. There's one issue. Me. Who <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> we, we still record in uh, Midgard Sound Labs, which is my studio. Yeah. 
and uh, it's a great tracking studio. But uh, you know, we got a little bit of flack about my mixes in the past, so uh, we actually recorded it at our studio. And uh, after we did the Ohio show, mm -hmm. Noy came down for a week, and we thought we'd take about a week to record his drum parts, and he did it in two and a half days. <laughs> and so we had another half a week to party, <laughs> which was really good. <laughs> I went and showed him cows and hay and stuff like that. <laughs> BBWs. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, uh, basically from Mysterium, uh, we, we wrote most of the songs. Uh, first and recorded most of the band parts first and then we added the drums when he was in town with us. Nella Road's Invasion album was released all the way back in 1980 and then re-released last year. We asked the band what their thoughts were looking back on that album. Well, you know, for, for lots you start somewhere. <laughs> yeah, for lots of years, I just hated even talking about the old stuff yeah. for some reason. And uh, but over the last several years, and I think Noidy's had a lot to do with this because he's such a fan anyway that he's helped make me realize how important that old stuff was to the fans yeah. and to the band too. And yeah, it's our roots. You know, we we came from there, so. It's something that shouldn't be forgotten, obviously, and uh, I think that's helped me in the writing of the new music that we're doing, too, because we took a lot more of a classic approach to this album, Mysterium. It's, it's like, I know a lot of people are going, oh, God, I hope it's not another playground of the damned album, you know, <laughs> and it's not, you know, although I still, uh, I still think Playground was a really good album myself. God, it was, too. <laughs> uh, as a matter of fact, I just got contacted by the IMA about that album. Yeah. Uh, they want us to submit, uh, I think, the title cut, Playground of the Dam, to the, uh, what is it, International Music Awards, yeah. I think. Yeah. So I guess uh, we may be up for, up for that, which is the first for Manila Road. Well, let me say something about Invasion. I like also the new wave British heavy metal stuff, and I yeah. really like stuff that is a missing link between 70s rock and heavy metal when it developed into heavy metal and I think that Invasion is one of those records that you you can hear, okay the 70s are still here but it also moves in the heavy metal direction. Yeah, see, by the time I, we got to metal it was obviously creeping into the more heavy metal sound, you know, with cage mirrors, clean black cars, stuff like that. Hey folks, I'm Monogam from Mark and you're watching Extreme Metal Television. Seeing the Excrementory Grindfuckers was one of the highlights of the Noctis Festival this year. Hailing from Germany, the Excrementory Grindfuckers have five full-length releases out, with their latest being a compilation. We asked them about their new Best Of CD. No, uh, that's the Best Of record we, we put out. It's just like um, a, a conclusion of almost uh, Almost every album, no, we had like four albums and we just uh, reduced it to one best of album or worst of album, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, it's the worst of, yeah. <laughs> and we, we, we took some songs that we wrote ourselves there. There are no covers on it because many people know already our cover songs, but uh, we put on just our own songs uh, to show that we are also able to do our own songs this worse with the cover songs, yeah. For the benefit of the viewers who don't know Excrematory Grindfuckers, yeah. could you give us a little backstory about the band? Uh, a backstory, yeah. We like uh, we like started the band like uh, 11 years ago, I think, yeah, 11 years. Uh, and we, we started this this uh, whole project just as just a, as a for, for, for fun recording project. And we had never plans to to make this a big band or something like this. I mean, we had no no idea where this could be heading to. And now we're like here in Canada and I cannot say what happened in the last decade. I don't know, so, somebody saw us and thought, hey, let's get these guys here. So here we are, but I have no reason for this. The Excrementory Grindfuckers bring forth such an excellent mixture of grindcore and pretty much anything else. 
We asked them how they choose which songs to parody and what drives them to create such unique music. Ah, uh, well, different sources, I think. It's hard to tell. Sometimes it's like, like spontaneous recording. Um, sometimes we have like stupid ideas and, and the first thing we had, uh, the first idea to describe our project was like that we, we try to, to, um, to make music or, or to, to, uh, to do some ideas, to, to make out ideas to, to total songs that nobody would touch because they are so stupid. And that's what we did because everybody's like scared of being looking stupid and this is what we do. We look stupid. <laughs> When can we expect to hear some new music from the excrementory grindfuckers? Yeah, yeah you, you are hard, uh, hard, <laughs> hardly fighting with our uh, band name. Yeah, I've, been, I've been drinking all weekend long. It's, yeah, uh, I'm Noctis, jealous. Noctis is kicking my ass. So. I'm jealous. <laughs> yes. uh, so you like it also, yeah? <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, well, I have to say we are working on a new album in the next months. I, um, I've been thinking about the release, like uh, maybe to, to the next uh, summer festival season. That's always our rhythm, we, you know, in the winter we don't play much shows, so we have time to hang out in the studio and record our, our stuff. Yeah. And I think uh, next year, summer, there will be a new record and it will be something completely different to what we did before. It will be like plain stupid, yeah. Edmonton's Villainizer recently released a brand new EP. We caught up with Rob the Arab Villain to ask him about the band's new release. It's called True Mental. The N being, you know, under parentheses, whether you choose to put it or not. Because everyone always asks me, is it, is it called True Metal, True Mental? It's whatever you want it to be. But so the whole point is that uh, I notice metalheads over the past years. I book shows, I, I put on concerts, I play gigs, I meet metalheads, and some guys are completely gung ho about everything they do, or you know, if you don't listen to black metal, then fuck you, or whatever it is, right? Even power metal kids are assholes. So it's just funny because everything that metalheads do is mental. Like it's fucking crazy. You know, we sacrifice a chance of success just to you know have long hair and a big beard, and you know just choose to do what we do because yeah. you know we're fucking crazy about it. Like the first two tracks just have to do with a funny idea is you know uh, that pirates were the terrorists of the sea and people always say do a pirate song because they're terrorists and blah 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 so we threw in a quick song called Metal Tsunami which is just about you know pirates and terrorists and kind of amalgamate it all into one fun song but the other two songs um, one of them is called True Mental it's the title track and it is all about you know it's one of those metalhead anthems it's like it's all about the lights the stage the music fuck everybody else we're fucked and we're proud and you know it's one of those kind of songs that you know like uh, Eternal Band from Destruction you know you, you listen to that song it makes you proud to be a metalhead and then um, the other song was called I Want to Play Metal All Night the stage concept to do behind that is that I get out of a mental asylum I come on stage in a straight jacket and I say that while I was in there I wrote the names of all my favorite metal bands and then when I noticed that it all rhymed well that's what I really did though is I, I had a playlist of all my favorite bands I'm like fuck I can make a song out of this so the whole song is like, like the first line, thrash is destruction, a testament of fault, creating, with a K, a tankard of nuclear assault. <laughs> That's awesome. So it's like the whole song is just made out of band names yeah. and it's one of those fun things that we're able to do. My favorite thing about Villainizer is their use of satire to address some pretty big issues. On the surface, some of their songs could be construed as offensive, but they do warrant a deeper look. I asked Rob to explain the concept behind the band's last album, I Bomb New York. <laughs> I have a lot of time even saying that yeah. right now. So with uh, IBNY, <laughs> with I Bomb New York, um, the biggest thing was anti-racism through racism. Yeah. I was so tired of these like sappy pop rock U2 type songs, you know, Sunday Bloody Sunday or whatever, you know, like, imagine that song in essence, but like, you're, you're talking from a sympathetic point of view, you're talking from the outside, being like, you know, leave us alone, stop, you know, whatever, you're, like, you're, you're bleeding heart. Metal doesn't have room for bleeding hearts, you know, metal only has room for fucking harsh aggression and anger and whatever awesome things bring out the the metalness in you and nobody can sum up metal into a term of words but they know the feeling when they see it yeah. and with that I mean what we try to do is anti-racism through racism so a song uh, like uh, Alice in Arab Land Alice is spelled A-L-I-S yeah. in uh, an acronym 
angry little infidel soldiers in Arabland. And the whole point is like, do a song about Americans just like, fuck yeah, let's kill some towel heads. <laughs> But at the same time, as much as people may be like, hey man, your song sounds like all you're talking about is like, fuck Arabs, kill Arabs, kill the Middle East, fuck the Middle East. Yeah. But at the same time, you're also being like, oh, there actually is people like this in the world. And then people start to contemplate on what it is that they're thinking, doing, saying, you know, all their Ahmed the dead terrorist jokes. And they're yeah. just like, yeah, well, this is hilarious. But at the same time, like people take two seconds to think about stuff because whenever racism comes into effect, people think about it. They criticize it, they do whatever. Every single person that has criticized our album has been like, you know, fuck these guys, they're fucking racist, blah, 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 whatever. And then you'll see a full line of comments just like, you're fucking retarded. You obviously don't get that it's like sarcasm, it's satire. It's, yeah. That's the whole point. It's like, there's an Arab singing about killing Arabs. Like, you really got to think about it a little more. And then the next release the person does is just like, hey, I'm retarded. This band is actually quite clever. Well, that's it for another episode of Extreme Metal Television. I'd like to thank you all for joining us. I'd also like to thank my co-hosts, King and Dr. Gore. If you'd like to send us a message, please feel free to send us an email at extrememetaltv at gmail.com. Like us on Facebook. But before I let you go, here's a terrible tale from the road from Speedwolf. One of our, what was it, like our fourth tour or something? Like one of our earlier tours. We were in Seattle, I know that. We were in Seattle. We borrowed a Fall of Carnage's trailer. Uh, and we, uh, I was driving and basically decided to drive the van and the trailer into a parking garage for a hotel. The clearance was a little low and uh, I basically took the roof off the trailer and hit a water pipe and it blasted water over all of our gear. Yeah, like if, if we pretty much hit like the valve that you turn and it just ripped the trailer off and sprayed water like yeah. in our trailer. You know, so it was just like gushing in our trailer. There was like six inches of water line on all of our amps. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, and plus it was at the hotel we were staying at, and they all came down there taking pictures of us <laughs> laughing, you know? And we were drunk. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't have been driving. The yeah. raddest ice game ever. Yeah, we were, we were taking some weird photos in front of the Space Needle, drinking Smirnoff ice. <laughs>